I'm going to show you how we can go about creating an animated GIF using Photoshop. Now there are two methods in which you can do this. So for this example, we're going to use one of the methods and then I'll share another example that uses the alternate method. For this particular example, I'm going to be using the frame by frame technique. As you can see, I've already set up my file and I have some elements that are on separate layers. So the layer that we see is called Angler. And this is a drawing that I made in Illustrator and just brought into Photoshop. I also have two other layers called Light Glow and Light Glow 2. And they'll be a little hard to see without the background. So let me just turn the background on. The Light Glow and the Light Glow 2 are just going to help to illuminate the little light on the end of the angler. So the premise of our animation is going to be that the angler will be off screen. He will swim onto the screen, his little light is going to blink, and then he's going to exit and leave the screen. The first thing that I need to do is I need to open up Photoshop's timeline. To do that, I'm going to go to Window, and I'll choose Timeline. And this is going to open up the timeline. Now currently, I am in the default Photoshop workspace. So this is the Essential workspace, which is the default workspace. There are other workspaces available and one of them is called motion. If we switch to motion, you'll see how some of these particular windows are going to kind of rearrange and it's going to give us a layout that is more particular to creating animation. I personally prefer to have the timeline down at the bottom because it just gives me a little bit more horizontal space to work through my frames. So I will leave the workspace in this motion workspace. But you might already be familiar with the fact that you can obviously customize the workspace and drag these panes to be anywhere that you want them to be. So even if I was in that other workspace and the timeline was docked over here or something like that, I can simply grab the name of that particular window or pane and move it to another area of Photoshop and dock it to another area, which is what I've just done. Okay, what we're going to do is since the fish is currently on the screen and the lights are where I want them to be, I'm going to actually start by creating my frame by frame animation and then we'll work backwards a little bit. A lot of times when I create animated GIFs, I prefer to just have my finalized layout and then I'll make a keyframe for that and then kind of deconstruct it and work backwards. I just find that to be easier rather than trying to build it all up, especially when we have other elements in play that might be harder to just align perfectly. So in order to create animations, you'll see that you have this little button down at the bottom. Mine currently says create frame animation. Yours may say create video timeline. They are the two separate ways in which you can create animations using Photoshop. You can actually use either of these techniques to create your animation and they will allow you to, in many situations, accomplish the same exact results. As I mentioned, I'm going to demonstrate both of these so that you can decide which one you prefer. If we use the frame animation mode, it will show you every separate frame and it allows you to set a unique duration and layer properties for each particular frame. The video timeline mode will show the frames in a continuous timeline and it lets you animate properties with keyframes and then you can play the video layers in that way. Ideally, you probably want to select the mode before you start an animation, but it is possible to switch the animation modes in a document that you're currently working on and it will convert from a frame animation to a timeline animation or vice versa but I always try to choose the desired animation type before I start. So as I mentioned, I'm gonna be doing a frame animation for this example. So I'll choose that. And then once you've selected the type of animation, you actually have to click this one more time to initiate the animation. As soon as I've done that, you'll see that my timeline is populated with a little thumbnail of my particular graphic that is displaying. And if you come to the hamburger menu on the right of the timeline and click and you go to panel options, you can actually choose 
how large you want the frames to show. So my frames are currently showing at the largest size, but if you open Photoshop and your frames are super tiny, you may want to make the frames a little bit bigger if you have the real estate to do so. I'll leave that as is. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this frame. Since this is the center or focused point of how I want my animation to look. So to duplicate a frame, you can come to the timeline. And if you click this little plus icon right here, this will allow you to duplicate the frame. So now I have two frames and they are currently identical. I'm going to go back to frame one and now I'll start making changes to the various elements. And the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to select the glow lights and we're just going to bring the opacity all the way down to zero because initially I don't want these to be on. So I'm just gonna bring their opacity down. It is an important distinction that I'm using the opacity rather than turning the eyeballs off. Then I'm gonna select all three of these items and I will click shift, hold and drag, which will constrain the movements to being on the same horizontal plane. And I'm just going to position these elements off screen. You may need to use your arrow keys on your keypad to nudge over and in Photoshop if you use shift arrow you move 10 pixels at a time and if you use just a single arrow you move one pixel at a time so if I'm doing shift arrow it will move off a little bit faster so initially we're just going to see the frame it's going to appear like this completely blank now as you'll notice when I moved the images off of the screen, it affected both of the frames, which is not what I want. And this is a little weird kind of wonky feature, if you will, in Photoshop. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do undo and get back to where I was before. And you can do that by using your keyboard shortcuts of edit undo or command or control Z, depending on your operating system. And I'm going to return to my initial state. What I'm going to do is I'm going to actually select keyframe two, and we'll do the same thing. I'm going to use my move tool. I'll click shift, hold and drag just to position the elements off of the screen. And now you can see that the two frames are showing different states. So at this point, I'm going to flip these by grabbing frame two and dragging it to the frame one position. So you can see now frame one is completely blank. Frame two is showing the anglerfish in its full glory. So now that I have these two frames, I want to create the tween. I want to create those in-between frames. And we can use Photoshop to help us do that. So I'm going to select both frames and you can do that by holding down your shift key and making sure that both of the frames are selected. You're going to go to this little icon right here, which allows you to create the tween. And when you do that, the tween dialog box is going to open. So this will allow you to choose what you want to tween. So in this case, I want to tween the selection, both of the frames that are selected. You can choose how many frames you want to add. So let's add four frames. And I'm going to tween all layers because I want everything to move simultaneously. And then the parameters. So in this case, I don't need opacity because I'm just moving the element so I'll just tween the position and I'm going to click OK and you'll notice as soon as we're done we get an additional four frames and if we click the little play button right here you're going to see that the animation is going to play and the first time through it might stutter a little bit but once it plays through once it should just continually play the options to control how it plays are in the timeline window Currently, this is set to play forever, which means it's just going to loop. You can choose to play it once or specify some specific amount of times, but we'll just leave ours on forever. And the other thing that we can adjust here is the timing. So you'll see underneath each frame, we have this little thing that says zero second, zero second, zero second. So currently, these are just immediately rushing through the animation. If I want to have a slight pause, I can click on any of these frames and I can adjust the 
delay. So let's set the first frame to just hold for like half a second so that we kind of like establish the mood. And then for my other frames, I'm gonna select multiple frames in this case. So I'll select frames two through five, and I'm gonna change this to point two so that they have a little slower animation. And if we play this now, you can see how the animation doesn't feel quite the same. It doesn't just rush through. We have a pause at frame one, and then the movement is a little more stepped, if you will. So that's looking good so far. I'm gonna to go to frame six, and we're gonna go ahead and hold this for half a second. And then I'm going to duplicate this frame. So I'll click the little plus icon down here and duplicate the frame. And at this point, we're gonna make some changes. So we're gonna to go to the light layers and I'm going to change my opacity setting. And we'll just bring this back up to 100%. So this is going to be my first glow and I'm going to tween this. So I'll select these two frames. I'll highlight the tween button. And this time I'm just going to have it make two frames in between. And we want to tween opacity. We don't need position. If you have some of the extra parameters selected, it doesn't really matter. It will still work, but you can turn them off if you need to as well. I'll click OK. And as you can see, it's going to now make a little animation where the glow kind of fades in. I'm gonna duplicate this last frame and then we'll go to the light two. And once again, I'm gonna bring the opacity all the way up to 100%. I'll select these two last frames and let's do a tween. And this time we'll just have it occur in one frame. So we'll have it happen a little bit faster. I'll click okay. It is worth mentioning that Photoshop remembers the last settings that you use, so you don't always have to change those. And now if we play our animation, our fish is going to come on to the stage like so. Now you may notice that as our fish comes on to the screen, the, the light portion is kind of slow. And that's because whenever we duplicate frames, it uses those preset settings. I want the, the light to blink on a little bit quicker. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click the stop button right here. And this is the frame where he kind of enters onto the stage. We have that for half a second. I'm going to select these subsequent frames where the light is basically coming on and we'll speed these up. So let's just maybe use like 0.1 seconds. So that happens pretty quickly. And then we'll have this last frame hold with the light on and we'll leave that at half a second. So if we play this now, you can see that he comes on the screen, holds for a second, and then the light is going to fade in rather quickly, and then it will hold again for a half a second. So that's looking good. I basically want to now have the light turn off. So I'm going to duplicate this frame once again, and we'll select frame 12. I'm going to go to my light layers and let's just bring the opacity all the way down. And I'm just going to do these simultaneously. And we will tween this. So I'll select these. I'm going to go to my tween button and we'll have this happen in two frames. Again, the parameter is opacity. I'll click OK. And I'm going to speed this up a little bit. So I'm going to select these last three frames and we'll adjust the timing to 0.1 seconds. So that happens rather quickly. And now we can see that the light is off. And now let's have the fish just exit off of the stage. I'm going to make another frame and we'll select all of the layers in the layer panel. Using the move tool, I'm simply going to move my fish off of the screen. And once I've done that, I'll select both of these frames. We'll do a tween. And let's have this happen a little bit more quickly. So two seconds. Again, this time the parameter is position, not opacity. So I'll turn position on and opacity off. We'll click OK. And as you can see, it's going to make the rest of our animations. And that looks pretty good. Let's hold our last animation for maybe 0.2 seconds. And then we'll just have it loop. So I'm going to play this. And remember the first time through, it might not play in the actual real time because it needs to kind of render. The other thing is you'll notice this bounding box. If you don't want to see that, or you find it distracting, you can uncheck the show transform controls and it will turn off. 
And now you can get a true representation of what your animation is going to look like. We've created this little animated GIF. We're using a frame by frame animation technique. And clearly there are lots of ways in which you could get creative and alter your elements. The final thing that we're going to want to do here is we're going to want to export this. We need to export this as an animated GIF. That is the file format that we are able to utilize that's going to support animation. To do that, we're going to go to File, and you're going to go to Export, and you'll use Save for the Web Legacy. Once we've done that, Photoshop is going to open our Save for the Web dialog box, and this is where we can dial in the settings. I've already talked to you a little bit about optimizing for web use. So once again, GIF is the only file format that supports animation. This is the one that we have to use. If I was to pick something else like JPEG, you're going to see that the animation is grayed out. We're not able to do that. Same thing happens with PNG. So the only option that we have is going to be GIF. That's the only file format. And when we are making decisions on the settings, we can choose again, if we wanted the animation to play once forever, or if you wanted it to play like five times, you could type five and it would repeat five times and then not play again. I'll just have mine loop forever. You can change the amount of colors. Right now it kind of looks a little weird and you can play the animation here too to preview it, but you can see how my gradient doesn't look so great. And that's to be expected. I mean, a gradient can't translate very well with limited colors because it essentially is using millions of colors, but we can probably get something that looks a little bit better. So if we play around with these settings right here and maybe try to bump this up to 128, you can see how now the gradient is much smoother and everything looks a little bit better. The light still has a little bit of a kind of glow, but I, I kind of like that. So I think I'll leave it as is. You'll want to check your file size. This is basically 51 kilobytes. That's not horrible, but animation is going to definitely increase the file size because you're generating multiple frames. That little file has a lot of information. So just be aware of it. Don't go too crazy. If there's a way that you can reduce the file size and you're not compromising the details too much, then consider doing that. I mean, you can see this is 32. I don't really like the way the light kind of pulls out. So I might want to try 64 and just do a little bit of a comparison and see if that's better comparing the file size and the quality. But I think I'm pretty happy with the 128 colors. So I'm going to go with that and I'll just click save and you'll be able to save this wherever you need to on your computer. I'm just going to leave the name as animated intro gif. I'll click save. And now the GIF file has been saved and I can utilize it on the web or in some other capacity. Hopefully this gave you a good introduction of creating a frame by frame animation using Photoshop.